Greetings YouTubers and students. Uh, today we're going to learn how to amortize a loan. Um, so this particular loan that I have here represented on this Excel spreadsheet is worth $18,000. I'm going to pay it off in full so it's a zero future value. My interest rate is 3.5% a year and my number of periods is two, so two years. Uh, but just like any other loan, I am going to make monthly payments on it. So I have two years times 12 is 24 months along the vertical axis. Along the horizontal axis, I have beginning balance, total payment, the portion of that payment that goes to principal, the portion that goes to interest, and then my ending balance. All for, for the month. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get started. My beginning balance, I'm going to pull up from up here, so equals there. Okie doke. My total payment, total payment, I'm going to go up to insert financial PMT, open up my formula builder here. My rate, what is my rate? Three and a half percent, but then I have to divide that by 12 to put it in months. Number of periods is two, but then times that by 12 to put it in months. Um, my present value is $18,000. My future value is zero, and that'll work. Hit enter. Okie doke, get out of my formula builder. Now, this is the total payment that I'm gonna make through the, throughout the life of the loan, so I have to make these cells reference groups so that they don't change when I pull down all of the uh, formulas. So my rate is gonna stay the same, my number of periods is gonna stay the same, my present value is gonna stay the same, and my future value will stay the same. I have all of that there, hit enter, shouldn't change anything. Now, how do we find out principal and interest? Um, for the purposes of this video, I, okay, so I, I know that there's multiple um, methods on how to get this interest payment, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you how Excel can do it for you automatically with a formula. So interest, um, insert financial I payment. It is right here, stands for interest payment. Go there, open up the formula builder. Okay, rate here, and I divide that by 12 to put it in months. My per, what is per? It's the period that we're in now. So it's month one, okay? Uh, click on cell A7. My number of periods is two, but then times it by 12 because we're in months. Present value is 18,000. My future value is zero. So hit enter, and then that should give you an interest payment of $52. Uh, that corresponds with month, month one. Uh, now we have to make certain cells uh, reference groups, so the rate will stay the same. My period, now this period will not stay the same because once I drag down all these formulas, the month will change. So leave period alone. Number of periods, though, stays the same. Um, present value will stay the same, and future value stay the same. We have all of that. Hit enter, shouldn't change anything. My principal payment, insert financial, and then go to P payment, principal payment. Click there, open the formula builder. Okay, I just messed something up, didn't I? <laughs> okay. Let's try it again. Da, da, da. Nice. Okay, happens to the best of us and the worst. Financial. <laughs> uh, P payment, where are you? There you are. Formula builder, here we go. Rate, rate's three and a half percent. Divide by 12. Period is A7. Number of periods is B4 times 12. My present value is 18,000. My future value is zero. Go ahead and hit enter. All right, let's make some reference groups here. Reference cells, I, I should say. My rate stays the same. A7, my month is in flux, so don't make that a reference cell. Number of periods is gonna stay the same. Uh, my present value will stay the same, and my future value will stay the same, all right. Now, let's double check our work. If I highlight these two cells, my principal and interest should equal total payment. Go down to the bottom and see the sum here, $777.65. We have a winner. All right, 
ending balance. How do you find the ending balance? We're going to equals our beginning balance and then I'm going to sum that with our cash outflow that goes to principal. Okay, and there's our ending balance for the month. So our ending balance for month one will become our beginning balance for month two. So equals there. Okay, now I should be able to highlight these cells and click and drag those down. Let's see what happens. All right, all right. It looks like it worked. So. <laughs> I have my, my payment stays the same. It's going to stay the same throughout the life of the loan. However, my principal payment goes up because I'm paying less interest because I have a lower beginning balance. Um, so there's an inverse relationship here between principal payment and interest payment. At, throughout the life of the loan, the amount of principal that goes into your payment increases as the amount of interest decreases. Then I have my ending balance here. So now what I can do is click this whole line here and click and drag all the way down. Alrighty, and there we, there we have it. So if you notice my, um, let's go in year three. So the, I'm sorry, the, the end of month two, I have 16,547 which then becomes my beginning balance of month three. My payment stays the same throughout the life of the loan. However, my principal payment goes up, my interest payment portion of that goes down, and my, of course, my ending balance goes all the way down to zero dollars. It is a zero balanced loan at the end of the life of the loan. Now, the cool thing about entering in all of, all of this all of these formulas here and clicking the reference the reference cells I can play with my givens here and make it any any type of loan that I wish I can play with my present value so I can make that let's say 25,000 okay and everything changes but it still zeros out the balance at the end of the life um, I can play with my interest rate make it 5% okay same thing um, so that's a, that's, a, that's a cool thing about Excel. Um, thank you so much for looking at this video and I will see you later.